This past January, Nichols presided over a public meeting of the Air Resources Board. On the agenda, the latest in a set of far-reaching rules that is putting California at the forefront of the battle over climate change. We are here to consider another historic package of emissions regulations uh, that I do believe are going to lead the way uh, for the nation and for the world. Reducing greenhouse gas emissions has become CARB's new focus ever since the California State Legislature passed the Global Warming Solutions Act of 2006. This landmark piece of legislation required the state to cut greenhouse gas emissions 25 percent by 2020. When Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger signed the bill, he told the Air Resources Board it was their responsibility to make it happen. Over the last six years, CARB's been busy. They said that all fuel sold in the state would have to reduce its carbon footprint by 10 percent. They said that one-third of electricity sold in the state would have to come from clean sources of energy. And they set up their own carbon cap and trade program, the first in the United States. All this has made CARB some powerful enemies. I have enough bills, but now the politicians are putting a new energy tax on us to pay for California's global warming plan. Texas yes, oil companies funded a ballot proposition in California to overturn the global warming law. The measure lost overwhelmingly in 2010. Seven ethanol producing states sued CARB, claiming the fuel laws would hurt their industry. Nichols says CARB is not out to decide which fuel is best. The question, she says, is all about the carbon footprint. Our regulations are aimed at trying to set a standard based on uh, some independent factor like pollution control and then let the different types of fuels compete with each other. So that does sometimes pit us against other states that are very strongly in favor of one fuel or another and um, don't like the approach that we're taking. Make it as simple and incremental as possible. And At CARB's um, monthly board meeting this January, the public galleries were packed. 160,000 vehicles at 100 percent. The board was about to pass rules that will dramatically reshape the automobile industry. So the next item on today's agenda is the advanced clean cars regulatory package. By the year 2025, there will have to be 1.4 million electric and hybrid cars on California roadways, and one out of every seven cars sold in the state will have to have zero tailpipe emissions. You might expect that such a strict mandate would have automakers up in arms. I'd like to commend both ARB staff and the stakeholders. But that's not what we found at the meeting. CARB has been on a very good way here, and uh, I, we, we really applaud you guys. Speaker after speaker from the industry said that while they had some specific questions about elements of the regulations, they approve of how CARB collaborated with them in setting standards. Nissan has been an active participant in all of the greenhouse gas national program discussions. The advanced Montverde. clean car program. Ford supports the national program for greenhouse gas and fuel economy. We commend the ARB for working with EPA. Well, it is just not about plug-ins. We have two electric vehicles. That Nichols says that this sense of cooperation wasn't always the case. I think the car manufacturers have truly changed their view of what their future is all about. They have a global attitude, they have a global market, and they want to go in the direction of making cars that are more fuel efficient. And uh, by the way, being more fuel efficient also means that they have a lower impact in terms of their uh, uh, emissions of, of greenhouse gases and their impact on the climate. In addition to the automobile companies, there were many other people who spoke at the meeting in favor of cleaner cars. And we believe these standards are not an option, but frankly, they're a, necess a necessary step. The American Lung Association shared their findings. If we completely transition to these new advanced near zero and zero emission vehicles, we can avoid over seven billion in public health, energy and societal costs every year in California. Consumer rights advocates were there as well. We are counting on California to lead America to a cleaner, more sustainable, more affordable future. And even people from other states looking to follow CARB's lead, like Oregon. 
Early introduction of zero emission vehicles in Oregon is a priority in our state, and I know it's important to you as well that the rest of the nation build upon the advances that you have pioneered. Like California, Vermont, and other Section 177 states have aggressive... Elaine O'Grady came from Vermont, one of a dozen states that take their lead from CARB's emission standards. States are preempted under the Clean Air Act from developing their own emission standards. So we basically have a choice of accepting what the federal government does or adopting California's regulations. And historically, California has always set um, stronger, uh, more innovative, groundbreaking motor vehicle emission standards. Cameras, you know about that. Yeah. Okay, good. If you've got it, watch it. If you don't, call your TV provider to get HDNet today.